Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. <laughs> As you know, in my last video, I, I got the engine all put in, everything hooked up, and I fired it up. I'll, I, I, yeah, I was missing the footage of me firing it up. That would have been a great capture, but the camera was off. But um, again, I actually forgot to film this video. I was, I actually fixed one of the issues that we encountered in the previous video, which is the engine check light. So the issues that happened last, in the last video is after we fired up, we got an engine check light and it's also idling a little weird. Obviously, having an engine check light, it could cause it to idle a little weird. But I fixed the engine check light, it still idles, idles a little weird. So what the idling issue is doing is basically when I open the throttle and then I close it, um, it starts to stutter and struggle and it slowly pick up RPMs. Um, it's, it seems like a, a, a vacuum issue or an IACV issue. I haven't looked into it yet, but every single time I do this, so I rev it, and then close the throttle plate and it would just struggle and from time to time it would actually stall and die and I have to fire it up again. Um, I mean, I have to see to see what that issue is. But for now, I actually fixed the engine check light issue which was related to the distributor. So it threw a code nine, which is the number one cylinder position sensor. So. What that is, is it's inside the distributor and and I've read on Hontech that people say that you have to replace the distributor or you have to replace the ECU. I wasn't going to do that. Uh, I mean, worst case scenario, I will have to buy a new distributor or a new ECU to try it on. But the engine was running with no codes um, prior to me purchasing it. So it shouldn't, it sh there shouldn't be anything. But the thing is, I did fiddle around with the distributor. For one, I had to rewire it from OBD2B to OBD2A plugs. The, the reason I did that is because the OBD2B didn't have a spot for a blue wire, which is the RPM signal wire. Um, so what you would do is you open up the distributor and there is this one spot where it's missing the plug on the, I believe it's the igniter or whatever. And, and what you would do is just attach a wire on there and feed it out and hook it up to your harness. Um, everything is kind of plug and play. So I did rewire the, the distributor using some old um, plugs from a, a OBD0 uh, distributor and I made myself kind of a jumper for it. Um, so I went from OBD0 to OBD2A. Um, if you already know, the, the distributors for OBD1 and OBD2 are essentially the same. The internal components can be swapped over uh, for both types of distributors. The only thing different about them was the plugs. So I didn't wire it for OBD1 plugs. I, I, I had access to OBD2A plugs. So I made it look as clean as possible by doing that. Um, and it is still the original Y8 um, distributor. So when I was, when I opened it up and wired up the blue wire, I did move um, a component uh, that would impact the sensor. So I did a lot of research on this uh, about, I don't, I don't, honestly, I don't even know how I came across this, about somebody rebuilding their distributor and pulling it all apart. Um, so then I was reading through this, this forum. I, if I could still find it, I may attach it in the description below. Um, it, it, it talked about like uh, certain sensors have to be spaced certain way, right? So that's how I fixed my distributor. So. I basically opened up the distributor again after I had this engine check light and I, I fired up several times afterwards and each time it's through the same engine check light code. Uh, sometimes it'll take a little longer for the code to come on and sometimes it'll just come on right away. I keep resetting the ECU, keep trying and kept coming back on. So I decided well, after I did my research, I opened up the distributor and I fixed the issue. I fired up, no engine check light now. Um, I grabbed it, no engine check light. It's been idling for a while and no engine check light. So this is the issue to fix it. Uh, I'm Since I've already fixed it already, I'm just going to talk about how to fix it. And I know that picture of a inside of the distributor is still out on the internet somewhere. So I'm just gonna pull somebody else's picture and show you, cause I'm not gonna open up my distributor again, but I will show you how to, to do it uh, so that you don't replace it. Maybe try this method first. Uh, to see if it is the, the issue to fix yours because I, I know a lot of people are having the same uh, code and couldn't figure it out. They replaced the distributor, replaced the 
the ECU and same thing, but um, I don't know if it's as simple as this, but it fixed my issue, that's for sure. So let me, let me show you um, step by step of what you need to do. So you're gonna start off by removing like this bolt here and there's gonna be another bolt back here and another bolt on the side here for your distributor. Obviously you unplug it. After you do that, you're gonna have to open up your cap. And if you've already know how to replace your cap and rotor, it's the same kind of process. So you open, take open all these little bolts here and inside there'll be a, a, the rotor piece. Um, it'll be either attached with a Phillips screw head or um, it's just clipped on. So you just pry that off. And then inside this distributor, there is a, an area, which I'll show you a picture if I can find it, um, of, of the sensor area. So what happens is there's this little spinny piece in the middle um, with a, a little lip on it. That actually has to be barely, uh, like spaced out enough where it's not touching the sensor and also not spaced far enough where it's too far away from the, the sensor. So, so it has, actually has to be spaced out perfectly for it to not throw an engine check light. So if it's spaced out a little bit too far, which mine was, because I did move that one, um, I did move that one, one sensor to loop the blue wire into my, my harness, um, just to make room for it and all. And, I, and when I, when I put it back, I was like, oh crap, it's actually hitting when I was spinning the, the in internal piece and then it was hitting the sensor. So, so I spaced out the sensor as wide as I can so that it, it stops hitting. But then now it's throwing engine check code. Um, I did not know that this would actually happen. I thought that you're supposed to just have it spaced out. I honestly didn't, didn't really look at it when I took it all apart. But then when, when I found a picture of somebody actually rebuild and, and on a forum when somebody was rebuilding their distributor um, or like moving the components from one to another, um, it, sh it talked about the spacing of the sensor. So then what I did was I, I un it's two Phillips screws in here. And then what I did was I unscrewed those, spaced it out so that it didn't touch, but it was, um, it was just enough for it to not touch. And, and then I tightened everything back, put it back on, um, centered it. As you can see, I didn't mark it, but then I have advanced the timing to uh, 16 degrees because it's stock at 12 degrees. Uh, 16 degrees is, I'm trying to match it with the ECU, um, hoping that that would fix the issue. I, I mean, it does idle a little, I mean, it does idle and run a little bit better with it advanced. So I have advanced it to 16 degrees, but that is on another note. Um, but yeah, inside here is that sensor and you would have to just space it out, um, you know, appropriately and it should fix the issue. So obviously you space it out, put everything back together, put in your, your uh, spark plug wires, uh, reset your ECU and fire it up and see how it goes. Uh, show you the picture and mark what sensors I'm talking about. And yeah, that is basically how you would fix um, the code nine, um, the number one cylinder position sensor. So I hope you guys found that uh, useful. Um, that was, that helped me get rid of my engine check light and I hope it helps one of you guys as well. Um, now I just have to figure out that idle issue. That's a whole nother story, but at least one, one issue is gone and you know, we tackle it issue by issue. And hopefully by the time I'm done with it, this whole thing is, is, gonna run smooth and and all that. I mean, the only thing I, the one thing I don't like is most people say just keep replacing components, replace this, replace this. That's a bad way of diagno diagnosing something unless you can actually borrow the parts from somebody that has a perfectly running condition um, and then you could try it on your vehicle. I wouldn't suggest just buying a new part and just putting it on. I mean, for the most part, yeah, a lot of stuff are wear and tear and you have to change it, but there are ways to check it and diagnose it. And that's usually, you know, you can find that information on, on forums, you can find them on, on the Honda on repair manual and stuff. So that's kind of what I'm going for right now. I'm not trying to replace everything. I know there's some other stuff on this motor or on this car that does need to be replaced. So I, you know, I'll, when I get to it, I get to it. But 
yeah um until next time um i see you see you guys in the next video thanks for watching cheers